Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 4. Today we're going to be talking about the finale. So you may be wondering why the face cam's on, but this is my final video for the season, so I thought, you know, why not? Let's just do this just for the start, and then at the end as well. So I want to say a massive thank you to you guys for watching my videos this season. It's been amazing. Although, you know, I didn't particularly like the first few episodes, I've been loving this season, especially since the mid-season. I think it's really took off, and this finale was insane. I loved it. And the way it ends, and how it sets up next season, how it sets up Crisis, super exciting. So we're going to be talking about that, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So, back to normal. This episode was amazing. I absolutely loved it. And straight from the start, you could tell that they were very confident in what they were doing because we have Lex Luthor returning, we have these flashbacks with Red Daughter and Lex Luthor and it relates to last episode when Supergirl fought Red Daughter for the very first time and we'll get to the montage in a sec but that is amazing. So Eve actually kisses Lex and this relates to how Eve ends this episode which we'll get to once we get there but yeah keep that in mind. So the president is taken out of office and this is by the end of the episode, and Lex essentially made him president is what is revealed. So he's basically the president. He's been pulling his strings the whole time. But then we get to that scene, and we get Frank Sinatra's My Way playing, which is one of the best songs of all time, and it's a perfect match to Lex Luthor because he's doing this all his way, my way, as he says. And he sings along to it. So Red Daughter versus Supergirl in flashbacks, and you see Kaznia attacking, so you see this whole montage of everything happening at once, with the lights going out because of Red Daughter, and Lex singing along to My Way in his suit as he destroys everything, so he literally did it My Way as he saves America, and there's explosions in the background, he looks so cool, and it's so chilling as he sings along because it's so evil, and it's perfectly Lex Luthor, and it's absolutely nuts. I loved it. Definitely... I think the second best scene of this episode, I love the ending which we'll get to very soon. And so this is by far the best Lex Luthor we've ever seen on film, TV, animated, whatever. I'm not such a big fan of Lex Luthor, but damn, John Cryer can freaking play Lex Luthor. He is easily my favourite, and he sort of made me like Lex because I think he's been great in the three episodes he's been in easily. Okay, so Lex completes his mission in this episode as he betrays Red Daughter, knocks her out, basically reveals all to her, and pretends he kills her, and that's what ended last episode. So you see Red Daughter crying over Lex's betrayal, she's in this pod, she's about to, I think he's been experimenting, taking their powers, that's what he said in the episode. So that's what's going to happen, but it doesn't actually happen to Red Daughter yet. And so... Nia and Jean are still trapped in this episode near the start. They stage a breakout and Jean fighting, like staging a fight between him and the other guy from the bar. Man, that was a great scene. I love that. Just the realness of that scene and how authentic it felt. And then it breaks out and they all break out and it's just a good scene. And Brainiac 5 turns back to normal and Nia Astral projects and tells Supergirl and everyone where essentially they are and how they can stop Lex's nefarious plans in this episode. And so Lex is in the White House. He invites he invites Lena and Lillian Luthor turns up and then we have Eve as well behind him. And so they talk about his plan of a lifetime supply of energy and Lex's plan is to destroy Argo City with about half of that. But then we see Eve sort of questioning that and saying like, you know, we were supposed to do it this way, and this plays into how Eve's ending actually plays in to it, so, yeah, keep that in mind, so there's a few things with Eve in this episode when you rewatch it, because I've seen the episode twice now, so, keep that in mind, and so, Agent Liberty has his final battle with Supergirl, he's finally defeated, and Jean and Nia overload the satellites, like, I think, David Harewood did such a good job in this episode, especially with that scene, because you feel the raw energy, and you feel like he's actually being truthful, he's not acting, you feel it's real. And Lex and Supergirl's final battle was amazing, he finds out she's still alive, and he's like, how are you alive, and she goes, I'm Supergirl. And I just couldn't help but smile, I was like, damn right you're Supergirl. And Red Daughter sacrifices herself to save Supergirl, and... Red Daughter says, you were right, 
My Alex was nothing like your Alex and she disintegrates back into Kara and she gets purple heat vision from the horror now and she goes, this is for Red Daughter. Wow, what a great end. Obviously I was expecting her to sacrifice or to be redeemed. So it went one of the one ways and I think Red Daughter has been absolutely brilliant. She has been perfect in every scene she showed up in. I just wish they showed her for longer. I know it was part of the plan and I kind of wish they showed Lex for longer but... I guess it does have the impact with them showing up for a short period of time and then taking over and being actually better than Agent Liberty and Manchester Black and everything. So they were great and I think that's definitely why the back half of the season was so good because of Lex and Red Daughter. So it was a great end, very poetic in the way it ended. So Lex falls from the sky as he's fighting Supergirl. People thinks he dies but Lena shows up and Lena is tested by Lex. He th he's like... You can't kill me. You won't kill me. And Lena shoots Lex twice. And I was like, oh shit, Lena's turning bad. And so he reveals in his last breath that Kara is Supergirl and all her friends have been lying to her because they all know, but Lena doesn't. So she finally finds out that Kara is Supergirl. It's been a long time and he says he's been underestimating you. So is she turning evil? Most likely, that is definitely what they're teasing, so she's going to take a dark path next season, and Lex, one of his final words is, the joke's on you, and he says, it's been standing right in front of you this whole time, I'm about to die, but at least I lived without being a fool, damn, what a great ending for Lex, I love that last few lines, and that last scene with Lena, and I was just like, oh shit, what is happening here? And chills run up your spine as you watch the reveal with Kara being Supergirl in that footage when Lena is looking and you're like, oh my god, this is so peak. And so, moving on from that, so Lex is dead, basically, is what you need to take away from that. And that Lena next season is going to be dealing with the repercussions of being lied to this whole time. And she's going to take a dark path because you can obviously tell that from killing her own brother. And so James and Agent Liberty use the cure on each other as they fight. We get this cool fight scene with Agent Liberty as he does his final few things against Supergirl. And then Supergirl is distracted by Lex and that's where we get to from before. And so what happened to James's eye? Apparently it's Haranel kickback. I don't know why he's wearing that eye patch. Maybe my only query with this episode is... I don't think he needs an eye patch. that's a bit weird, not a big fan of the look, I don't know, but anyway, so we go towards the end of the episode, Kara, Nia and James are all in Catco and martial law is officially lifted, the Alien Amnesty Act is back to normal, so you know, aliens can live in public without being harassed basically, so that was great, very touching and Colonel Haley says, for a moment this country doubted you. We won't make this mistake again. So talking to Supergirl, very, very touching. I really nearly teared up in that scene because you saw Kara smiling and everything's back to normal. So I'm not sure if Haley's going to stick around next season. I don't think there's any need for her to stick around. And I don't think she was the best character. I thought she was fine throughout the season. She didn't really add too much. But that last scene with her, I think is a nice way for her to maybe go out because I don't think there's a need and you know you can make Alex the director and actually be like full force in control because when Alex has been the director she hasn't had barely any control compared to what Jean had before so I'm hoping for more Alex control in the DEO next season and so we get this ending and this ending is like the last five to ten minutes so I'm gonna class this as the whole ending scene because it's when the song starts and I couldn't find the song but it one of the lyrics was, I never knew that fire could burn like this. And so this really reminds of the season one finale. And we'll talk about why in a second. But you see Alex and Kelly, they kiss. And it's so touching and intimate. And it's shot in a really, really intimate way where we're close up. You see them and damn guys, I ship it. I ship it. Alex gets a new girlfriend, this has been a long time obviously built up, but I feel like it's truly there, I feel like there is that real chemistry that say Alex and Maggie had, and obviously it's going to be quite a while until a lot of people are able to get around that Alex is going to have a new girlfriend that's not going to be Maggie, I love Samvers, but I like this as well, I think this is a probably a good step forward for Alex, and 
at least it's going to give her a lot more story than she had at the start of the season. And obviously she had some really good story nearer to the end of the season. But yeah, so I really, really felt for that moment. And I really, really dig it. And so, like I said, this reminds of the season one finale as they kiss and then the song fades in. You see Nia and Brainy just walk around saying like, oh, we don't see anything. So Brainy and Nia are together. I dig it as well. And we get the whole family meeting up and they're doing a game night. And it is very much so like if you remember and recall back to season one, how they ended, they were all together. It was Wynn, it was Kara and everyone. And then, you know, Mon Al's pod comes down and the all together basically and the music is in the background very much so like this scene and it plays in a kind of slow manner where you really feel that music and you feel the scene and the emotions within the scene so Lena shows up and she's not really there she's sort of in another place because she's thinking about the revelations that just occurred and so Jean's making them switch up the teams really great classic Kara I love it. It just feels so authentic and it feels like the Supergirl I know. We haven't had many of these very nice moments this season. Like, they haven't all been together that much apart from, you know, fighting and stuff. So I really, really like this moment at, towards the end of the episode. And then, so, Kara's like, but you're with me, right, Lena? And then we get this amazing moment between Kara and Alex as they come together. And it's just so nice to see them back together because... You know, they've been separated for a long time this season, so it's very, very comforting to know that they're back. And so Kara's worried about Lena, and Alex talks her out of it, because, you know, everyone's kind of happy for now. Everything is sort of back to normal, as they think, and so they decide not to tell Lena, although Lena knows we know that, so that's a bit of dramatic irony right there. And so Ben Lockwood's son is rectifying his father's mistake that happened Obviously, throughout this whole season, he's in prison. The Children of Liberty are no more. Supergirl smiles. I hope we don't see them again. I'm just kind of a bit bored of them, and I thought it was a good way to wrap it up. So, we see Eve, and she's got a wig on, she's got a hoodie on, she sits on the bench, and a mystery woman comes up to her and says, We will always find you, Eve. And she goes, Who are you? And she says, I did everything you asked. I worked for him. I hurt people for him. Lex was supposed to move the needle, he failed. And this is when they say, Leviathan is everywhere. Leviathan is everyone, and Leviathan is coming. So what is Leviathan? That is crazy. When I was watching this, I was like, holy shit, what's a great end? Because now I'm like, who the heck is Leviathan? This is sort of a bit like how they ended season two with Rain, where they obviously dropped the name, but they didn't show anything specifically that you're like, oh my god, what's happening? And yeah, so I really like that. Let's talk a bit about who Leviathan is, and just quickly, let's talk about Eve. So she's been working for whoever Leviathan has been the whole time, and basically what she's been doing with Lex has been for them, and so Lex was supposedly supposed to move the needle, and he failed. And this may play into how the ending of the actual episode, like the final frame, where Lex shows up again, and he's with the monitor and he's supposedly revived and we'll talk about that in just a second. So Leviathan, who the hell are Leviathan? So if we go back into the comics, there is actually two Leviathans in the comics and we'll talk about that. Also, there's a new one from DC, which is mainly to do with Superman that's coming out this summer. But I highly doubt it's that because that's not even been revealed yet because that is coming this summer. So Leviathan. So the first version of Leviathan is a character and this is a creature with an obsessive hive mind of many children comprising a single being and so it's later expanded into an organization led by Talia al Ghul and so the way they talk about it is that we are everywhere Leviathan is everywhere essentially comes across as this is some sort of organization However, I do think that whoever Leviathan is, I think it's this one person as it starts with, and then maybe he has a sort of cult-like following, maybe a bit like, say, Savitar and his cult or something like that. I think they shouldn't go with the Children of Liberty route. I think they should go with a bit more sort of mystical route, not just basic people being racist and shit like that. 
because I don't think that really worked with Children of Liberty this season. That was like my probably my one problem was the Children of Liberty and Agent Liberty. And I think they are going for an organization. It definitely teases that. And so the other version of Leviathan is actually from the Legion of Superheroes. So this is interesting. It because the Legion is so linked to Supergirl, it may be linked. It may be a twisted sort of counterpart of Leviathan from the Legion of Superheroes in the comics, but he is actually Colossal Boy's counterpart and he's a hero. So that's the one thing. He's a hero, but they may twist it and they may go with him because, you know, Legion is very much so involved with Supergirl right now. Well, especially last season. And so I think that's interesting. And maybe if they do go with the Legion route, maybe him turning into a villain or something and creates this organization. Maybe that's a way to bring back Monel or Win in the future because Win's supposed to return next season, as they've been saying. So I think it's more likely to be the Batman villain, you know, Leviathan, who then creates the organization with Talia al Ghul. And basically, in the comics, Leviathan actually kills all the adults and saves the children. So. I don't think they're going to do it that way. It seems like these are all adults rather than children because in the comics it's a bunch of children that is being allowed to act like a single unit. And so I think they're twisting it whatever way they go. But I don't think it's as clear cut as looking straight into the comics this time as it was say with Rain because we were like, yeah, this is definitely Rain from the comics, the Supergirl villain. So I think that's interesting to note down. But then we move on and we go to the next scene and this last scene is so intriguing and this excites me so much as well because this is a teaser for another villain and I think this may potentially be the villain maybe for the first half or it could be the other way around, I'm not too sure. And so a portal opens, a hooded figure meets the monitor. So the monitor's back. Obviously teasing and linking to Crisis on Infinite Earths. This happened at the end of Arrow, which teased Crisis on Infinite Earths. And also at the end of The Flash, they teased Crisis on Infinite Earths. So everything's sort of lining up. And so we see this new villain and he's with the Monitor. So the Monitor is all about that balancing act. You know, sorting out the universe, preparing everyone for the Anti-Monitor who is eventually going to come and cause Crisis on Infinite Earths. So... Bringing back this villain, who we'll talk about in a sec as to exactly who he is, is definitely to do with crisis and balancing, because it seems like right now, what's happening here is obviously not what's supposed to happen, and the Monitor needs this person to actually cause some chaos and go after Jean. The Monitor says, You've been trapped for too long, a phantom to your people. Now it is time to avenge yourself against the brother who wronged you. You must walk the path yourself, and besides, I have one more place to visit. And then we get the revelation, the hood comes off, and it's a lookalike to Martian Manhunter. This is John's brother. He is arriving. He is a character in the comics. He's a villain, and I have no freaking idea how to pronounce his name, but it goes Malafiak, I think. Malafiak. I will have it on the screen right now, but it's so hard to pronounce. It's absolutely not a human word. And you may have seen him actually in some of the animated shows or the animated films. He was in Justice League Doom, and he was actually played by Carl Lumley, which is a nice link because Carl Lumley plays John's dad in the show, which is kind of awesome to see. But anyway, so he's a big character for John Jones in the comics. He is his brother. He is essentially called the darkness in the heart which is very much so the complete opposite to John Jones and so John is his twin brother and they look exactly alike so at that moment I was like holy shit what is happening he is going to come he's going to be the villain I cannot wait for that because it's so intriguing because he is a great super villain if you've seen him or read him in the comics so he in the comics was an architect of an extinction level event which has been since known as Haromir's Curse, who we've obviously heard reference many times on the show with Jean, but in the comics, Haromir is the god of death and darkness, and what this version of Jean does, this twin brother of his, Malefic, who I can't say, he basically sought to destroy the entire Martian race, so 
He was born differently. He didn't have the ability to telepathically communicate and use his powers like everyone else. And he devised a mean to attack his fellow Martians and cause this plague to kill all these Martians. And so it seems like this version of this character has actually been around all this time, but he's been locked away. He's been living on Mars. He's been in the ruins of Mars, most likely, as he was in the comics. And he was unaware that John Jones had survived until now with the monitor coming and being like, you have to do this, you have to do this and search your brother and kill your brother or whatever he intends to do. So he's going to be a main villain next season as well as Leviathan. I don't know which is going to take more effect, but I am interested in both because we don't know much about Leviathan and Malefaic is very intriguing and he's a great villain in the comics. So I think... Jean is going to have a big storyline next season and that is very exciting to me and so this is when we go to a shot of Lena and we see a cracked photo of her and Kara and Alex so that's obviously symbolism for Lena turning bad and they are cracked and she's going down this dark path and so Lex is supposedly revived by the monitor in the final shot of the season as he twists his hands and you see the blue lights come from him as he looks at the dead body of Lex Luthor. So that's it from me, thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you've enjoyed these videos this season, I know I've been loving doing them and I will continue to do them into the summer so please be sure to turn on notifications, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the DCTV show to stay up to date with me and also thank you to all of you who came up to me at the ultimates i got a photo with some of you guys it was super awesome to see you guys and i'm at mcm london comic con later this week i'll be there so if you're there please be sure to let me know and say hi if you see me also i'll be at san diego comic con this summer super excited melissa grant gustin everyone is going to be there i'll be at the panels super super excited so thank you guys so much for watching and have a great summer but remember, come back tonight for my ending explainer video for Supergirl Season 4's finale. So I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.